Devin Pike with Red Carpet Crash here at our rooftop studio at the Dallas International Film Festival. And tonight at the DFS Honors, the TXU Energy uh, Light Up the Red Carpet um, areas, uh, the Environmental Visions Award will be given out by the gentleman sitting to my left, an absolute icon, not only in Dallas with the show that bore his namesake, but also <laughs> worldwide, the incomparable Larry Hagman. First off, Larry, thanks for spending time with us this morning. I've never been called incomparable before. Really? I don't even know what it means. Well, it means that there's no one else like you, not only in... Oh, oh, I like that. Well, okay. Well, then we'll stick with it. Then. Okay. I won't even edit it out. It'll be All fabulous. Right. Um, tell me a little bit about when you were first reading for the role of J.R. Ewing. Uh, I didn't read for it. I just got it. They, they just said, we, we got this part for you, Larry. Here you go. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, Made it a lot easier. Well, I can imagine so. I mean, because... People say they can't imagine anybody else playing Jr. And, e and even in the the revamped version of the series, which you're going to be um, appearing in, the, the revamped series that's uh, shooting here in town here in the next couple of months, mm -hmm. I can't imagine anybody else being as good of a scoundrel on film as you. And it's just, as an actor, it's got to be great to have a part you can just really sink your teeth, jaw, and jawbone into. Uh, I immerse myself in it, yes. Well, I was lucky to have a good part, and, you know, I ran with it. I'm, I'm from Weatherford, or Fort, I was born in Fort Worth and lived in Weatherford when I was a child and then finished high school there. And uh, so I knew the vernacular, I knew the mindset of this area, and uh, it paid off. As somebody, and some, as somebody who grew up in the area, to see a show that focused on Dallas or the area where you grew up, it had to have been really heartening for, for the 70s to be able to say, you know what, it's not just about uh, the Chisholm Trail, it's not just about you know, what happened in 1963, there's a whole other side of the city, and for eight, nine years, I mean, I'm sorry, how long did Dallas run? Because I, 13 I, years. 13 years. I, I only have up to season seven on DVD, <laughs> and I apologize for that. I'm uh, I will have to make up for that. Well, I'm, I'm buying the rest as, as I can afford it, you know, as a, as a journalist, I don't make a heck of a lot of money. But um, for 13 years, the, the show was ubiquitous with the city. And then to, you, you hear it in Germany, Japan, Russia, when, when the Iron Curtain fell. They learned about America by watching you and everybody else on Dallas. Yeah. Amazing. They got the wrong impression, but <laughs> still works. <laughs> works for me, rather. What was the oddest thing, you know, after, even after Dallas wrapped and, you, and you're still working, you know, around the world, what was the oddest experience you had with somebody who confused you with J.R. Ewing? Oh, uh, well, that happens all the time, but it's all positive. Uh, I don't know. I think everyone in the world has a jerk like uh, J.R. in their family, a father, a brother, a cousin, an uncle, or something like that. And not only that, but on the woman's side, too. You know, There are a lot of aggressive women out there, too. There's a lot of Kristens. There's a lot of Sue Ellen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it strikes a chord all over the world. No matter what race, color, creed you are, you could be Arabic or African or whatever, they've got a jerk like this in the family. Tell me a little bit about your work with environmentalism, because there, there's a specific reason. They didn't just say, hey, let's get Larry Hagman to hand out the Environmental Visions Award. You, you've been very active and vocal in environmental and conservation um, matters over the last couple of years. Well, about the last five years, really. I uh, solarized my home. I have the largest solar home in America, probably the world. Uh, my bill, when I first uh, converted it, uh, was $37,000 a month, uh, a, a year, rather, 30000 $37,000 a year, and after I put my solar in, it was $15 a year. So, uh, but of course I had to pay a lot of money to get it there. Yeah. But it'll pay off in another five years, I think. And, and especially with energy prices, you know, fluctuating so drastically. Goes up about 6% in California a year. So, you know, in, in five years, I, I will have paid it off and uh, be having free electricity, which is I love driving, um, when I'm driving through California, uh, heading to Los Angeles, there's that massive wind farm as you're coming over yeah, the one crest uh -huh. of valleys. But as big wind as we get in Texas, across the plains, is there any excuse to not have a wind farm of that caliber in the, in the central part of Texas feeding the rest of our grid? Well, I mean, as soon as they start granting uh, wind power and solar power, the same perks that the petroleum and coal industry gets, I think it'll even the play, playing field because... I mean, petroleum and, and coal, I mean, people don't know it, but coal, 80% of the cost of the coal is in its transportation. And the transportation uses diesel oil. So it's a double bind. You're really paying a lot more for coal than you think. 
Is there a, is there a specific um, environmental um, agency group that you're working with that you'd like to tell people to get more to get more information? Well, I'm working with a company called Solar World. It makes uh, the most solar panels in in America, and uh, it's a German company. And I'm very popular in Germany, so go, I go over there quite often. And I've been working with Solar World, and uh, we got them to donate. Um, $100,000 worth of solar panels to Haiti for Paul Farmer's um, uh, uh, clinics over there and it's made a tremendous difference in their ability to serve the people because uh, they used to have diesel and it's very expensive in Haiti and also it's hard to transport so solar power came in and it's a tremendous tremendous difference in Paul Farmer's uh, running of his clinics over there. Larry, I, I got to tell you, when I found out that you were on the slate tonight, and we're going to be down there on the red carpet, and we're going to be broadcasting live. Sorry. No, that's fine. It's all right. You just, you just owe me a round at the, the, the place later on tonight. That's okay. fine. <laughs> 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 Have we had a phone go off this week? You're the first one to crack the phone barrier. Oh, uh, well, I just talked to my son in Munich, and I left it on like a jerk. And my <laughs> daughter's calling me from Los Angeles now. so That's a global world. Man. I know. It's Angeles amazing. Thing. What did we do before these things? Uh, we, we, we had more quiet lives, I think. I think so, yeah. My phone is my leash. I can't stand it sometimes. Have you ever lost it? Yes, and the terror I in know. your throat. I know. I know. It's, it's just like like losing a person, like a, somebody akin to you, you know. Larry, it's an absolute gas to have you. Thank you so much for stopping in. It's an absolute treat. Thank you. Thank you for having me.